wanted to share this video to take a look at the way I've been doing sidechain compression in Reason uh, for a while now. I'm going to show three approaches here. One is using uh, the M-Class compressor. One is using a rack extension from Sonic Bits IO called Pump, which is super quick and easy to use. But then also a little bit more of a flexible, more complex way where you can sidechain multiple devices at the same time. So we're going to take a look at this. So if you want to stay tuned and um, we'll dive into side compression in Reason. So Sidechain compression is a type of compression where the effect level on one device is controlled by the volume level on another device. So a common example you'll see in most places is where the compression level on the bass, say, is controlled by the output volume of a kick drum. So as I said in the intro, there are three ways that we can do this in reason, or three approaches that I'm aware of. Uh, if you know of any others, please comment below and let me know. Always learning in the reason space. So an analogy I can think of here is a bit like, um, you know, imagine a boxer in the ring and without side chain compression, the face takes the full force of the hit. So imagine the kick as it's hitting there. But controlling the compression and the threshold on the devices is how they would say dodge the blow or swerve as their head moves away and doesn't quite catch the full force of the kick. So you may hear it referred to as ducking. So as the kick hits the base or the synth, the pad will duck out the way to give that space. That's where you get that pumping effect in house music. So let's dive straight in and take a look at the uh, configuration that I've got here. So we're going to move the mixer out the way in the EQ and the sequencer at the moment. So we don't need that. So the first option we've got here is um, creating a combinator. So I have this sidechain combinator set up here in the rack. Within that I've got a single red drum in here with a kick. Now you'll notice if I play this you can't actually hear the kick. Okay, and you'll see why in a second. Just beneath that we've got a number of spider audio mergers and splitters. So we've got one for distribution, which you'll see the red drum is wired into that. And then the distribution pings off to spider one, two, three, and four. So if we flip it round on the back, you'll see that the left and right out of the red drum is going into the side chain distribution merger and splitter here. And then each of the four outputs here is finding its way to sidechain spider one, two, three, and four. And you can have one of these, two, three, four, whatever. It's just having the four here gives you the maximum um, amount if you want to sidechain multiple devices uh, within the rack. So if we flip that background, that kind of is just sat there beneath the master section. So the interesting bit about this is any of the devices that are in the rack, you'll notice my base here has got the word comb uh, at the end of it here. So if I flip the rack round again, you'll notice the side chain input here is coming from one of the uh, outs here on this particular um, uh, spider audio. And the way you connect that in is if I just quickly disconnect these, you can right click on the left and you'll notice sidechain combinator is available in here to wire into. And then you'll notice there's four of these spider audios. So what I can do is any that's available won't have the asterisk to the right of it. So I just quickly disconnected left and right from split output one and two. So I'll do the left and it automatically wires in the right. What that means is once that's wired in there, if we go back to the mixer, you can see again on base comb here that the key sidechain light was lit up and I can disable it if I want to. 
So what I'm going to do is just solo the kick and the bass on this so you can hear it. Now once that key, key is activated there you can then start to dial in your compression and your threshold. So as we, as we run this if we just turn off the kick so we can hear the bass. So if we turn off the compressor there's no sidechain compression taking place. If I turn it on you can start to see the LEDs light up here and this is dictated to by the threshold so as I lower the threshold and raise the compression the side chain becomes more it has more of an impact there if I turn the kick back on and the other important piece to this setup here is is in the sequencer in the combinator kick track here there's actually the notes in here to fire the kick okay because that's what that's what's driving that ducking effect so the kick as it hits the bass is dodging out of the way but also you'll notice I've got a synth here with a with a some strings and this here as well is also if I go to the rack and flip this around we're also taking out the side chain input on this one but again if I look it's going to spider audio one but it's going to I need to rewire this one Bear with me a second so you'll see this if we disconnect this here and then we'll wire the left into spider audio one for left and right so again here is this runs So again, this is controlled up the top here. So in that example, it's quite intense. I hadn't turned on the side chain, but if I turn the compressor on, lower the threshold, push up the ratio. It's kind of taming those strings there a little. And again, you can get pretty intense with this. You throw up the threshold and the compression, you'll see the indicators hit and red. You can barely hear it. So of course with any of these other instruments I could go to the rack and I could look at uh, doing the side chaining again through that setup. I've got all these available slots uh, available to be able to do that. The other way to do this, which is a sort of simpler way to do it, would be in this example here on this other synth, where we're actually taking the kick from uh, the kick drum here. And if we look at the parallel out of that kick, it's coming all the way down here to this compressor that, that's related to this Gina City uh, synth and patch and uh, same kind of setup here so but we don't use the actual compressor on the M class here you'll notice it's not enabled and the key lights not on but if I solo this and we run this again you can see again we've got a similar sort of setup here where the threshold and the compression come into play so as I lower the threshold you can start to see the compression taking place and that's firing from the kick here. Okay so if you think back to option one that I talked about up here we could have just taken the output of the kick here the parallel out and put it into the input here of the distribution and we wouldn't need this red drum. The limitation here is, is I'm taking the kick and I'm wiring it straight into one particular device so these two kick and tuba city are working together. If I wanted to do another uh, device uh, I'd be limited there by what I can do. So that that's the second way which to be honest I've, I've done all three over the years but I tend to go with the combinator because it gives more flexibility in order to sidechain multiple uh, devices from one 
uh, kick input. The other one which is interesting is this um, last one here which is the rack extension from Sonic Bits IO. I'll put a link in the description to this. I think it's £19 at the moment for the Reason Studio Store. Uh, this is really easy to use actually. You literally just drag it in here and if we solo this synth so here we've got the setting dialed in here we've used this four on the floor patch there's a bunch of patches you can play around with but this is the one i tend to default to and the interesting thing is the more you lower the floor here the more intense that side chaining sounds if i raise it it's not as intense So that's the three ways that I'm aware of that you can do side chaining in Reason. I'm sure there are others, but they're the ones that I've been using, as I say, for a number of years. I'll put a link to the Sonic Bits IO uh, pump uh, rack extension, because of course you could just take this and I could have dropped this onto all of the devices, the bass, the strings, and the one that I was using the M class on if you wanted to. But um, again, it's just options. It's super easy actually to apply this. And you can see the effect instantly by setting pump and then just lowering the floor. So if you like this video, give it a like. Um, please subscribe for my future work and uh, check out some of the discussions. We've been having inter interesting discussions around the matrix pattern sequencer recently uh, through one of the previous videos. I'll pop a link to it up here somewhere. But um, yeah, please subscribe. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah.